Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth and help to keep you from going to jail by unintentionally committing fraud. Uh, so the point of this video, and I'm obviously not flying solo today, this is my friend Malik, he is a CPA. Um, and if he does look familiar, you guys probably recognize him from the ATM side hustle video. He is actually my CPA and I'm a client of his firm's. Uh, so he helped me get through this uh, paycheck protection program and he helped me with the SBA and he helped me with everything, making sure I do it and it's on the up and up. So I wanted to extend his expertise in this video um, because some people, whether they know it or not, are actually committing fraud when they actually applied for this uh, stimulus package loan. So the loan is forgivable, but you have to meet some certain criteria. Um, so whether Malik um, runs his ATM side hustle business or he's a CPA, um, I think he makes hummus on the side. I, I don't know. Maybe his mom does. I don't, is that bad? I'm about to get my butt beat after this video. Um, he's going to help you guys get through this. A lot of people benefited from my EIDL grant video. Um, I can't tell you how many people reached out to me on Instagram and said, dude, I got a thousand bucks because of you. Thank you so much. Um, I kind of want to follow up with this video and make sure you guys don't get into some hot water. Um, so I'm going to let Malik introduce himself and then also talk uh, briefly about the PPP program. And then we're going to go through some of the questions about how the SBA and the government is actually um, filtering through these applications. Hey, I'm Malik, and as Marco mentioned, I work full-time as a CPA at an accounting firm in Northeast Ohio. Marco is actually one of my clients, and we've dealt with numerous amounts of these applications, anywhere from small businesses applying to large businesses. The PPP loan was originally set up to help these businesses survive this economic crisis during the pandemic by helping them continue to pay their operating costs, such as payroll, rent, utilities. Got it. Um, so for those of you that don't know, obviously my YouTube channel is a business and I am an employee of my business. Basically the criteria, and Malik can explain, is somewhere along the lines of whatever your average payroll is, whether you have you know, employees or if you're an independent contractor or self-employed, you can take your average monthly income or your payroll and what are the numbers with that? So if, if you do have people on payroll, what you want to do is take your average monthly payroll cost and multiply that by 2.5 and that's the amount you should be applying for the loan for. Um, if you don't have anyone on payroll, if you're an independent contractor and have no one on payroll, what you want to do is take your average net income for 12 months. So you take your net income for the 12 months, divide that by 12 and multiply that number by 2.5 to figure out how much of a loan you should be getting or applying for. Got it, okay. So the issue with the video as mentioned is some people are either abusing this program by claiming, hey, you know, I'm taking out you know, $500,000 even though really they're only supposed to be using it for a significantly less amount, lesser amount. And I, I wish I could take out that much, but I can't justify it. So um, basically with the PPP program, you know, what are some steps that the SBA has taken in detecting these fraudulent filings? That way the audience doesn't get in trouble. So the SBA actually, they assigned the Office of Special Inspector General to uh, investigate this stuff. And what's gonna happen is the Department of Justice is gonna prosecute any charges that they do find. Got it. So is this just for the people applying for the loan or is this the lenders or who are they kind of filtering through? It's mainly for the people applying for the loan, but it's also for the lenders and we'll get a little bit more into why that is. Okay, got it. So um, with, so I guess with the lenders, let's, Let's start there. I mean, how can the lenders possibly get in trouble for giving out loans? I don't get it. So basically with the first set of money that they issued out for the PPP loans, what was supposed to happen was the banks were supposed to take clients in order of first come first serve. So the first applications that come in should have been the first ones being processed. But as you all know, banks make money from um, these applications and processing them and they make more money off the bigger loans. So what banks were actually doing, particularly big banks, where instead of going in order of first come first serve, they're basically picking their largest clients that were taking the biggest amounts of loans because they were making more money off those applications. Got it. So at the, sorry to interrupt. So at the end of the day, I'm a bank. It takes me an hour to process this anyway. You know, it it benefits me by servicing my bigger clients first because they're asking for bigger loans. I'm kind of neglecting the small guy, right? Exactly. Got it. Okay. So I guess for my audience, what is considered fraudulent filing? So for the basic criteria you have to meet for the PPP loan is first and foremost, you have to have under 500 employees on payroll. And then secondly, you have to have been affected economically by this uh, COVID-19 crisis, whether it be by sales or you know not able to keep up with your operating expenses, having to fire people due to it. 
Got it. Like a reduction in revenue, things like that. Exactly. Got it. Okay. So I guess if I'm one of these people that knowingly or unknowingly did this, what are some of the consequences? Like, is this a white collar crime? Am I, get, am I getting a slap on the wrist or am I going to jail in maximum security prison? What people don't realize is this is actually, if you fraudulently file or misuse the money and try getting the loan forgiven, it's actually considered a felony offense, a federal felony. So I guess as a business, how, how can I protect myself and make sure that I'm doing everything on the up and up? So again, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you have under the 500 employees and that you were affected by this uh, COVID-19 crisis. And if you meet that basic criteria and you applied for the loan and you get approved, what you do with that money after has a lot to do with whether you are considered fraudulently filing or not. Got it, so I can't go out and take this loan and go buy a Ferrari, right? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> what this money should technically be used exactly the way it should be used is you wanna use up to 75% to keep people on payroll and continue paying them. And then up to 25% could be used for other miscellaneous operating uh, expenses, such as utilities and rent and things like that. Got it. So if I'm renting out the studio space or something like that, uh, and I do have a payroll, just for easy numbers, let's say it's $1,000 a month in payroll and my rent is like, I don't know, two fifty. dollars So if I use seven fifty dollars for payroll, like 75%, and then I use $250 bucks, um, for paying off my rent and things like that, that's 75, 25, I would be good, right? Absolutely, and another thing you wanna to do to kind of protect yourself is if you get approved for this uh, loan, set up a separate account on your business, put all the money you got from the loan in that account and document everything separately. So when you're doing the payroll, have it coming directly from that account because what's gonna happen is when it's time to try applying to have this loan forgiven, you have to give documentation to the banks to show that you used it properly. And if you don't, you this isn't gonna be a forgivable loan and you will have to pay it back at that 1% interest. Got it, so uh, if it's not forgiven, it's a loan at 1% interest rate. If it is forgiven, it's like a grant, it's like free money. Correct. Right? Okay. Ag again though, it's important to remember whether you consciously or unconsciously filed for this loan fraudulently, you have to be aware of kind of what you're doing and what how you're spending the money because if you spend it incorrectly like if you go buy a Ferrari with your money you know you that is considered a felony offense and you could get in trouble got it so i got to give back the ferrari i got to pay back the loan you know at that 1% interest rate and there may be obviously consequences jail time things like that right got it okay so what is that period say uh, today's the first of the month i get the loan um, when does when do i have to prove all this so once you get the loan, the eight week uh, period starts of using that money. And over those eight weeks is when you want to actually use the money. And that's where they get the 2.5. The eight weeks is pretty much the two months, the two and a half months. Got it. So you want to use that money the proper way and use it for the things it was intended for. Got it. Okay. So just to conclude the video, this is going to be a short but sweet one. Um, I don't want to turn into one of those channels that just does stimulus update, you know, like literally every three hours. But um, to, to conclude the video, um, is this worth pursuing if I'm a small or medium business or an independent contractor? You know, is this a real thing? It just sounds like free money. You know, that's too good to be true. And you know, what would you advise my audience if they fall into that category? Would you pursue this if you were them? Absolutely, I would. So if you meet the, ba meet the basic criteria for applying for the loan, um, I would definitely suggest that you apply for it. And if you get approved for the loan, don't be scared. As long as you're using the money correctly in the way it was intended, there's nothing to be scared of. Like I said, document everything, the way you're using the money. I, I recommend that you set up a separate account with the money and just that way you could document every penny that's being used from that amount. So when it comes time to apply for the forgiveness, there's no problems. Got it. So keeping a super clean paper trail, basically. Absolutely. Awesome. Cool. All right, Malik, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know this video doesn't apply to every single one of my subscribers, um, but based on the feedback that I got, again, from that EIDL grant and loan, uh, it does sound like a lot of you are independent contractors, um, small business owners, et cetera, et cetera. So as always, just looking to provide value. Um, I could have probably summarized this, but at the end of the day, I think it brings a lot more value to bring on an actual CPA and someone that I'm actually working with. Malik is a great resource. Not only is he just a CPA, but again, he's got a side hustle. He talks about entrepreneurship. Um, he will, he actually informed me right before this video that he will be starting his own YouTube channel. And if that is launched at the time of this recording or by the time this video goes out, I will definitely link to it in the description below. Uh, any final words, Malik? Um, no, that's it. Uh, like I said, before you jump in line to get this loan, make sure you guys are meeting the criteria. And once you actually get the loan, make sure you document everything and use the money properly. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much for your time.
All right, thanks everybody. Which one do you, you like so? better? Because, because, because. Dude, the, dude, the, that was perfect, man. You think so? Yeah, what, what, what were you gonna I was gonna say, the one thing that you didn't ask is like, what is considered fraudulent filing? I know we kind of got the oh, basic criteria, but like falsely claiming the company has fewer than, which is the basic criteria, but then exaggerating monthly payroll costs. So they might lie and be like, my monthly payroll comes to 20,000 when really it's 15,000. That's all stuff they could get caught for that would be Got considered it. like fraudulent. I think we made that pretty clear. All right, cool, yeah, okay, I, okay. Honestly, here, let's, uh, here, let me. Uh, Did we get in the jail time and stuff?